Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, Fly Fish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today I'll be tying a steelhead pattern. Uh, it's fairly, that's a, for a steelhead, it's probably a fairly small pattern. Um, I tie this in anywhere from a size 4 to a size 2. Uh, today I'll be tying on a size 4. Um, and basically what it's going to be is the, uh, um, it's going to be a, a steelhead version of uh, Stu Thompson's DDH Leech which, let's see if you guys can see it, this one right here. So that's what it's going to be. Uh, yeah, that one, this DDHH, but a steelhead version of it. Um, if you haven't got uh, Stu Thompson's book, make sure you go out and check it out. This is a phenomenal book. He's got everything from from uh, uh, pipe, pipe patterns to bass patterns to um, um, tropical patterns to chronomids to everything. You name it, it's in here. Great book, really good book. Uh, and we're going to be using his, um, I'll switch over while I talk here. Um, we're going to be using Stu's um, dark water dubbing blends um, for this pattern. Um, I picked some of this stuff up at the uh, Edmonton Sports and Boat, Boat and Sportsman Show uh, this past weekend. And uh, I tell you, it's some of the, some of the m nicest dubbing blends I've ever run into. This stuff is absolutely gorgeous. It's super soft. It's super, uh, uh, it's got like, I think three or four different uh, um, colors blended in it, depending on the on the color. Um, there's like so many different ones that he's got. Um, where I, it's hard to see, but there's all kinds of different colors in here. Um, and it's dark water dubbing, so that's what it's called. Alrighty, so I'll be using dark water dubbing in, I can't remember what it's called, midnight black or something, a midnight red, something like that. I can't remember um, that. I'll put it in the description when I find out. And I'll be using this pink. Okay. Um, for a hook, I've got the Mustad, Mustad S, oh, there you go, SL73 BL, BLN-36890. Oh, that's a mouthful. Um, in a size 4. Like I said, I tie it in a size 4 and in a size 2. I'll be using Zipperfly Nano Silk for the thread. I'll be using a uh, Dumbbell Eye. Uh, you can use bead chain eye too if you don't if you want it to sink a little bit less if you don't want it to be so so heavy. I'll be using some hens black marabou, and I'll be using some Zemperfly uh, Gala blend, uh, the Gala and red blend. I love absolutely love this blend. Um, so let's get her going. It's a fairly simple pattern to tie. Fairly simple as long as you get the dimensions correct. Just get that nice and tight, close up that gap of these hooks. Then I'm going to get my dumbbell eye, and I want to leave myself a bit of room at the front on these. So I tied three, four times that way, three, four times this way, and this way, and back this way. And now I'm just going to kind of get it tied down and fairly tight. Now what I like doing is going under, 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 and then I will start my four or five times that way, four or five times that way, that way, that way, and that should be pretty tight, that is. Okay, and you see how I've left a little bit of room at the front? And the reason for that is there's is I'm gonna come over the eyes with the dubbing. So now I'm just gonna go down, just put a little bit of a base layer down get my piece of marabou absolutely love this this uh, hens marabou it's uh, some of the best I've ever found um, nice and it's got lots of movement nice and fluffy so I'm just gonna peel pretty well one whole side off of this feather uh, it depends on the size you're tying and it depends on how good of a feather you got how much you want to add here but I'm gonna do pretty well this whole thing if not the whole thing on one side so I peeled off the whole one side and got my little package. Now I'm just going to figure out my length. I want it to be about one and a quarter of the body length. So about like there. So I'm going to pinch my, get my finger, cut off the excess, excuse my reach. Offer that up there, right behind the eye, nice and tight down. Go all the way back to where the, the, uh, the barb is, I'm going to pinch that barb, lift the tail, go in behind it, over top, in behind, over top, in behind, over top. That just helps, I mean, I'm wetting it a bit just to keep it under control. That just helps keep it from fouling, 
um, keeping it up. Okay, now I'm going to come back up forward. I'm going to grab two to three pieces of this Gala blend. I said I absolutely love this stuff. It is, uh, yeah, I know I'm, I'm a Zemperfly rep, um, I'm in a protein, but I tell you, I'd be buying this stuff even if I wasn't. This is phenomenal stuff. So I'm going to lay two or three strips down one side here. It's going to get that tied in. And catch it that way. And then I'm going to lay them both down the side, each side. And then I'm just going to, in open wraps, there, just so it's tied in. Then I'm going to tie, cut it just ever so slightly longer than the tail. Just ever so slightly. And again, just wet that. Okay, now that that's done, just make sure it's all tied in nicely. Nice long dubbing loop. Tie that in all the way back. Really get that tied in. Then I'm going to take my, sorry, just going to get that uh, gobble blend out of my way because it's in, getting into my, uh, dubbing spinner so now I'm going to attach my dubbing spinner and now depending on how thick you want this is how many bunches you put in here so I'm going to take it out and I'm just going to put little finger size bunches like this into my loop and I'm going to get it nice and tight right up to that that hook and another bunch just leave it in bunches like this a lot of it's going to come out when we're pulling out, but that's fine. You can always put it back into the package. Right? So another little bunch. And there definitely is a direction to this stuff, uh, to any dubbing. When you're pulling it out, take a look which way that it's going. I wouldn't want to put it in that way. I want to put it in that way so it catches more of the material. I know this looks like a ton of material. It's not. Trust me. I'll let that slide for now. One more, one more good one. That guy in. Oh, I kind of want it to come out. There we go. Put that in. Keep it tight. Gonna grab one good bunch of the pink. Move that up. One good bunch of the pink, and put that in at the very end here. Make sure that the stuff is staying in. It's wanting to come out here. Trying to do a video and put this stuff in and all that at the same time is a little bit of a pain, but. And now the pink right at the end here, and that's it. So there's my big pile, okay? So now I'm just going to give it a good spin. Let that catch. A good spin. You definitely want to make sure you're using a good, um, good thread here, a nano silk or something like it, because you you want to spin the crap out of this. You want to get this a nice, nicely spun up, and you don't want it to break. Even there, I just broke it because I overspun it. So, but I still got it, so that's good. So now I'm gonna grab my. This is a steel wire brush, and I'm just gonna brush out a bit of that that black dubbing. Okay, I'm not too worried about the pink at this moment. I'll get that in a bit. So now I'm just gonna go around once. Right up against the last one twice. Right up against the last one three times. Now I'm gonna take the dubbing brush. And I'm gonna brush that out Be pretty aggressive. Brush that out nicely. Okay, one more. And one more. Brush that out. And another one. I actually, because I, I broke it, it, it ran out. So I'm going to have to do this a second time, which is fine. Not a big deal. We'll have to do a second dubbing loop. 
which is probably easier anyway if you're uh, if you're new at it instead of doing one big large dubbing loop. So, but before I do that, I'm going to really give this a good brush out all the way around. Get the material just pulled out nicely. There we go. So now, all the material I pulled out, I've got sitting right here. So I'll just do another quick little dubbing loop. Dubbing. You guys should watch Stu do this. His DDH leech. <laughs> it's crazy to watch. The guy knows exactly to the like perfect every single time exactly how much dubbing to put in. It's just, uh, but I guess after you've done a thousand of them or ten thousand of them or whatever it is that you, you get good at it, right? So um, a little bit more black. Dubbing spinner in there. Keep that closed a bit. Let me get a little bit more of that pink out. I'm just uh, stacking it, kind of, getting it in there. So it's kind of the fibers are going in the same direction. There we go. Good spin. Okay, again, brush that out a bit. If you do it by section like this, do the dark first, then you can keep that dubbing, right? If you do all of it at the same time, you get that pink blended in and you don't want that then, right? You don't want to have, so now I keep the pink separate. So, okay, let's go again. So tight up against, tight up against, the last one, against the last one, against the last one. Now again, really get this a good brush out. And I'll do more once I'm all finished, but if you do it as you go, you'll get a better result. Okay, and now I'm going to get right in behind here and then I'm going to go over the eye and over the eye. So I figure eat it around the eye and then I'm going to come back around front, catch that in, stroke everything back, tie off the head. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just wet my fingers a little bit just to get all this material out of the way. Build a bit of a head. Wet finish. And then it's time to go crazy with the brush. You really want to pull this stuff out. Get that get all those materials that are entrapped in there out, right? And no matter what you do, you're going to trap some. So so now, I again, just take my, just going to move my dubbing because I pulled it all out of the bag. Put that back into my little bag here. Same with the pink. Put that out, out of the way. Just so I'm not mixing stuff into my good bags. Because right? this, this stuff that's kind of mixed, I'll, I'll I'll keep on the side and I'll make like a almost like a like a waste troll leech type thing with different colors so okay so that's all been done now I'm gonna take my wire brush again and now it's time to just get aggressive and it is definitely this stuff I tried uh, pulling this stuff out with uh, velcro it works but this wire brush works way better And there it is. We're finished. See a little bit of, a little bit of that came out, but I'll keep that, like I said, and I'll do like a waste troll leech. Put that in my little bucket over there, and that's it. There's your your finished little uh, steelhead pattern.
could be used for, for uh, steelhead, could be used for salmon, um, all kinds of things. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, Stu Thompson, you got to check out his book. He's got all kinds of cool patterns in there. He, he actually does a lot of uh, a lot of this style of pike type patterns as well, and uh, and uh, yeah, bass and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, check out uh, Stu's book. And uh, yeah, if you like that, give her a thumbs up. Um, if you subscribed, thank you. If you have not, please consider doing so. And uh, leave some comments. Um, let me know what you guys want to see in the future. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, uh, pass uh, get the word uh, out there for, for people too. Because once we get close to that, uh, you know, that 2,000 mark on uh, subscribers, I'm going to give away a pretty good package. So um, that people will really like. It's going to be a lot of loaded with fly tying material stuff. So, all right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Tie lines, everyone.